Patrick, he said those paramedics didn't have all the information they needed to respond to that call. And tonight, he's saying he's considering policy changes so something like this doesn't happen again. Blurry surveillance video from January 15th shows the night 49-year-old Jolene Waldriff called 911 as she suffered a medical emergency. A responding Curtis ambulance can be seen driving past twice, but it never stopped. By the time a passerby found Waldriff in the snowbank, it was too late. We look at situations like this and we go, is a protocol change necessary? In this case, I don't think there is. That was Curtis Ambulance CEO James Baker speaking to the media on January 30th. In a phone call with 12 News on Monday, Baker said he is now considering changes. So what's changed? What has changed is we have looked into the call in even more depth. He's talking about Waldriff's call to 911 the night she died. The audio obtained by 12 News on February 1st. 911, where is your emergency? I can't breathe. And that was the first time that we had heard that the patient was having shortness of breath. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Had medics known Waldriff could not breathe, Baker said they would have responded with lights and sirens. Was sent uh, to a very low priority call. And that had to do with the fact that, from, from my understanding, that neither uh, my company nor the fire department had that information about the difficulty breathing. Baker also said Curtis Ambulance medics did not have the GPS coordinates from Waldriff's call. They only knew the intersection 76th in Congress. Now, a GPS coordinate, which I have obtained after the fact, very clearly shows the northwest portion of the intersection. Baker says that GPS information is available to dispatchers, but it didn't show up on the first responder's computer system. If we have a call like this in the future where we can't find a patient, we will be able to go back into the, the written records, pull the GPS and map quest it and find exactly where it is. And Erica, we understand the CEO has meetings this week to discuss the potential policy change. He says that their ambulance company is meeting with Milwaukee Fighter later this week. And the CEO also mentioned that if the city implements a policy recommending that uh, crews search for patients by foot, that his company will comply.